Data transfer. All right, so here's all we're doing. I'm gonna try and run Fab's auto backup and see what, am I gonna do that? How much stuff can this lady have realistically, right? He says before he finds a terabyte hard drive completely and utterly full on the computer. This thing isn't even reading in this computer. Oh, why, why me? Like it's powering on, you can see it powering on. But then it's like, nah, no, I don't believe in this. Well, we're doing it. We're doing this the old way. Off it goes. All right, so I guess we're gonna learn how to take this apart. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you like these videos, make sure you hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. It really, really helps the channel. Today, we're gonna be moving data from this old Dell to this new Dell. Pretty simple, straightforward. We have a Dell Inspiron 53. So normally I would just a device like this transfer it over. Unfortunately, the USB ports do not work on this. There's no real way for me to just quickly get into the computer and pull out the data. And because of what this is, I guess to use my old screwdrivers. Going so on the bottom. You're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And make sure you take out the little SD sticking out the front. And this is, of course, one where the keyboard has to come out to get this apart. So let's go ahead and start getting this apart. And I'm not going to worry about putting this back together. If the lady says she wants it back together, I'll put it back together at that time. But for the sake of expedience with this, we are just going to get all of the screws removed. All of the screws on this are the same size, um, except for four. Should be this one, this one, this one, and this one. These are the these are actually holding the hard drive in into the bottom of the case. And actually, it might just be those three. Now that I think about it, yeah, just those three. That one, that one, and that one. So those are the only three that you really need to keep separate. And I already had them mixed in. That's fine. Not going back together. But if you want to put it back together, make sure you pay attention to what screws come from where. And this is an old guy. This was originally designed, as you can see, for Windows 7. And Windows 7 activation servers no longer work. You can still call in. But they've transitioned everything over to Windows 8 and Windows um, 10 on that. All right, so we got all the screws out of the bottom. Let's give it a flip. I'm gonna grab our little pry tool here. Now, if you look along the top here, you can kind of see, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see them. So we have these little slots right here. There's one there, there's one there. And there's one all the way over there. We're going to take the flat part here, put it in there, and slowly push those in, and then lift. And then up and out it comes. And you gotta be careful with some of these. There's adhesive on the bottom of it. This one does not have adhesive. You're just gonna flip it over in place, lift the tab, out it comes. Now, once we're here, Looks like we got a screw here holding the CD-ROM drive in. That's why that front panel came off of it. And then out it goes. And nope, we don't have any other screws holding it in. So now, make sure no wires and stuff are coming through there. Oh, we need to remove, like unplug this. This is your palm rest connector. Make sure that's unplugged, otherwise you don't want to rip it. And now, you should be able to just Make sure, no, we don't have any tabs down there that are holding on. We don't. Just all the way out. Now, as you're going to pull up, you don't just yank. Like, this has that connector, which is something. I have to figure out. Oh, it's a speaker. And then over here, we have the same thing. There is a the power button is part of this. It's not part of the actual computer. So, all that just to get to that. So now... Do it in reverse. 
I changed my mind about putting this back together. We're just going to put it back together real quick. Oops, <clears throat> which I was already about to make a mistake. Let's take this, put this back on here. Most of y'all kids don't know what this is. This is a DVD-ROM drive. Not even an RW. This is just a straight-up DVD-ROM. Slide that back in. Keep, I need to go. Single screw holding this in. Now, I had someone ask me, hey, if you were to take this computer, put Windows 10 on it, would it run? The answer to that question is yes. The actual answer to that question is, why in the world would you do that? If it's all you have, do it. It's gonna be better than running Windows 7 with security updates. There's no way this will ever run Windows 11, but at least for now, you'd be able to get something that's a little bit, a little bit more modern. You'd be able to put, say, Chrome on here, get online, do stuff. Um, you'd be able to do word processing, check your email, just your basic things. That's what you'd be able to do with this. Generally with these, I take computers like this, I upgrade them and I donate them to veterans. But because this has a Intel four gigabytes of memory, I would, I would not even necessarily take this for donation. I'd be like, just take it, take it to a landfill and put it out of its misery. So on the bottom of this, when we put this keyboard back in, there are two screw holes that are on the bottom of this that actually, let me show you, you can see them there. They actually line up here and here. So make sure before you try and thread screws into those holes, there's actually something there into. And two remaining screws, flip this over. Like I said, I'm not plugging these cables back in. That goes in and we're done. That is how you take apart the Inspiron N5030 and put it back together under five minutes. There you go, just be careful. Especially when you get with these older laptops, these clips are gonna be super brittle. Especially if you have someone like, I'll, I'll use this as a perfect example. This computer to me is completely useless, but to the person who owned this computer, is it's still useful for them because they use it to run a CNC routing machine which is only capable of running on Windows 7 because they don't want to spend another $10,000 on software. So let's get that set off to the side. And next, get this guy plugged in and turned on. We're going to actually try and use our backup rack again. I tried using this last week and ran into a weird problem. But unplug that, but not going to be plugged in with that. Cut off of here. Open. That in. This actually has a USB C, so if I wanted to, I could go USB C to USB C. Get this turned on. We're going to take our drive. We're going to slide all the way over to here. Click it in. Come on the bottom here. Press our power button. So power. And I have the switch that's on it. There's a little switch there. You can kind of see it's set for SATA. And it looks like it's reading now. So it had to be that hard drive I was trying to test this thing with. And get this signed in. And get everything moved over. The only thing that's a little bit weird, this is one of those refurbished laptops that I purchased. So I'll need to purchase another two. Uh, is this trackpad has a like a grit to it and I don't know why. Alright, Emily. So we're going from there, we're going to here, we're gonna go to users. Continue, fast, users. And we'll get everything moved over as soon as that gets done. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked that video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I stream daily on Twitch at twitch.tv slash specvengeance. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about my services, check out bradentonpcrepair.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.